All right, next we're going to configure the actual radio. The radio I'm going to show you is a NanoBridge M in the 5.8 gigahertz band. Now, assuming that your computer is set up on a network and it's on the 192.168.1.1 network, we can log in by typing in the default URL address, which is 192.168.1.20. Nope, that one dot 20. And we're going to hit enter. And it'll pull up the password login screen. The default username is UBNT. The default password is also UBNT, all lowercase. Now for ham radio use, we're going to select the country. We're going to actually select compliance test. What this does is it will open up all the frequencies that are available that the radio can use. Now if you're not going to use the actual ham radio bands and you're going to use the unlicensed frequencies, you're going to want to choose the actual country that you're in and that will select the actual frequencies that you're allowed to use in there. But for the ham radio use, we're going to select compliance test and English for the language and we're going to agree to the terms and log in. Now, compliance test still has a lot more frequencies that are available that are not legal for ham radio use. So you're going to want to watch and make sure you're actually in the correct frequencies. The main screen pops up here on the bottom right. It's going to show us that we're on the default password. We're going to change that later, so we'll just dismiss that. The main screen is going to show you basically the dashboard. It's not configured yet, so it's searching for channels right now, as you can see here. Um, and this is just the very default mode. Um, what we're going to do is going to go up to the wireless tab up here and start configuring the wireless portion of it first. So the default settings is going to be, this is going to be set up as the secondary user in the default settings. We're going to want this to be the primary first radio. So we're going to set this up as an access point. We're also going to want to set up the WDS transparent bridge right below it, and we're going to want to enable that. That actually links everything and makes it a flat network. Uh, for our use, we're going to turn that on. The SSID below it is going to be just like your home router, whatever you want to name it. Uh, for example, I'm just going to name this one HSMM Ham Radio. Type that in. That's going to be the SSID that shows up when someone searches for it. Below we've got compliance test, we've got that set. Uh, the channel width is set to 40 megahertz by default. That's a whole lot wider than what we need. We really don't need to use all those frequencies. That's a ton of wasted space for almost any use uh, for HSMM, unless you're going to be doing massive amounts of bandwidth. 5, 10, or 20 megahertz is probably all you need. Uh, some radio firmware options even let you go down as low as 3 or 5 meg or 3 to 8 megahertz also. Uh, for example, most people end up just using the 10 megahertz. That's going to be plenty of bandwidth to do anything that you need. Also, the lower the bandwidth that you have, the less noise you have, and the further you can go. The more bandwidth you're taking up, the less power output you have overall. Uh, so lowering the channel width will increase your power, increase your distance, and be a whole lot less noise for it to hear. And that will also, less noise means a better signal, faster speeds, more reliability. Channel shifting, we're going to want to keep off, keep that disabled. What that would normally do is shift the frequency up uh, 2 to 3 megahertz, just a little bit off the standard channel offsets. Normally we don't need to use that. That's only in rare cases when you've got some very specific noise. Uh, the frequency, for example, this one is the 5 gigahertz module. Uh, the US ham radio bands show that we can use 5.650 gigahertz to 5.925 gigahertz. So we are going to be able to use between 5650 for the ham radio use. Uh, let's find that. The 5650 all the way up to 5925. And this can go way above and below, but make sure you don't go outside of the bands. Um, you could use, for example, 5900 would be a, a good one to use right there. Now, because I'm using a 10 megahertz wide channel, the center channel is going to be on 5900. The top portion of it, 5 megahertz up, is 5905. And then the bottom portion is 5895. So between 1, 2, and 3, that's 10 megahertz. It's 5 between 5900 and 5895. 
and then 5 between 5900 and 5905. So that's where you get the entire 10 megahertz from. In this demonstration, because I currently only have one ham radio uh, available unit, only one that will go into compliance mode, all of my others are the US version, I'm just going to show you in the licensed bands here. And I'm just going to use 5800, for example, which is a shared frequency between the ISM unlicensed bands and the ham radio bands. So those are shared frequencies. The antenna, uh, this is to select which size you've got of the antenna. Uh, this radio head can fit in the 22 dBi dish or the 25 dBi dish. For this one, I've got the 22. What this normally does is it auto configures the output power for each country on the maximum allowed power limits that they're allowed. Uh, the ham radio use, we're allowed up to 1500 watts, so it really doesn't matter in there. Uh, the max power that this unit can actually put out is 23 dBm. The maximum transmit rate, you can actually set this. Uh, this will actually, the lower you go, it'll slow down the transmit rate. You really don't need to use that. Leave it all the way up on automatic unless you've got problems and you know what you're doing. Security, you have to leave to none in the ham radio bands. If you enable WP, WPA, WPA2, any variation of those, you're breaking the FCC rules because you're encrypting it. We're not allowed to do that, so we're going to leave that the same. So with all these settings on here, we're going to hit change, and that sets them, or it's going to preset them. You've got two options up on the top in the blue bar that comes up. You have the option to test it, which allows you about three minutes to test the settings on it before it locks it, before it reverts back to normal, so it doesn't lock it in in case you make a mistake, or we can apply it. This one I know we've got set up correct, so we're going to apply it. Some settings, when you do it, it will actually reboot the radio all the way as a full reset. Uh, some settings, it doesn't. So the next step, we're going to go into the Network tab. We're actually going to change the LAN network settings of it, the wired portion of it on the network. Uh, we're going to use this, leave this one as a bridge, so it's just a flat network. We're not going to do any complicated routing. Just keep the mode con uh, configuration mode all simple. You can set it up as DHCP uh, to assign addresses through a router. I like to keep it as static so I know exactly the IP address of every single radio. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about figuring out which radio is which. It's easier to just leave them. The default is uh, 192.168.1.20. We're going to want to change that because if you have another radio you put in later and they're both on 20, they're not going to work. So we're going to change this one to 50, for example. The net mask we're going to leave at 255.255.255.0. Gateway IP for our router is going to be 192.168.1.1, uh, which is the standard router settings. DNS IP, I like to use Google of 8.8.8.8. .8 Real easy to remember. It's a great, uh, great DNS server. So we're going to click down here on change. And all this is doing is basically just changing the IP address from the 192.168.1.20 up top here up to 50. Uh, so that way we've got a different IP address of it from the default settings. Some browsers, once you apply it, will automatically change it. Some you might have to manually type in .50. On this one, for example, this setting, it actually reboots the radio, so it shows unable to connect for a couple seconds. The actual radio module takes a couple seconds to reboot and go back on. So we'll hit try again here. And once that's been rebooted, it's back on. So now my browser uh, with Firefox automatically changed it to 50. So now we can log back in again, username and password are both UBNT at this time until we change it. And that's what we're going to do in this next step here. We'll go over to the system tab. Oh, down here it's showing us to change the password, which we already know. So we'll go up to the top at the system tab here. And we're going to change a couple things on here. The device name is the actual name of the radio and antenna and you're going to want to set this for the location of where it's actually at. This is going to help you a whole lot on knowing exactly where which radio is uh, throughout your network, so you don't have to figure it out manually. It makes it a whole lot easier to just set this. There's also another very important step is adding the call sign. The actual call sign that's going to be in charge of this radio, the control operator, has to be in this device name. That's always going to be beaconing out, and it's always going to be connected, so that keeps the FCC legal. So for example, we could put uh, hospital and KC8GRQ on it. Now I know that this antenna is going to be located up at the hospital. 
uh, and it's mine, so it's legal, and we know where it's at. You could also put uh, EOC for Emergency Operations Center. You could put whatever you want. Now, let's just say that we're going to use this one as hospital. You can set the time settings on it, which doesn't make a big difference, but it gives you a little information for later. You're going to want to change the username and password. Um, type in your username for whatever username you want set up in there. Uh, you're going to also click on the key, change the current from the current password of UBNT, and enter in your new password. We're going to, for example, on my video, we're just going to leave this to the default and not change it, but you should change that definitely. Nope. So, uh, actually, got to go back in here and I guess it's going to force me to do that. So then we're going to change that. I'm going to go back up on the screen. We're going to apply it. And then we can come back to the main screen again. So this is the dashboard that's going to come up on here. And this is the easiest way to tell what's going on with it. Now, for example, we've got the device name of hospital and the call sign. We know it's a network bridge. We got set up as an access point to the, the main radio that others connect to. Uh, SSID is HSMM ham radio, so anyone that's scanning can see HSMM ham radio. No security. We've got the firmware version, time it's been on, uh, time and date that it was actually rebooted. Uh, the frequency and channel number, channel width, distance uh, to the actual other radios so you can actually tell how far it is and this is actually pretty accurate it's pretty neat uh... this is a nano bridge so it's two chains it's a vertical and horizontal polarity you got the antenna type the LAN and uh... wireless LAN MAC addresses and then this shows that we're connected at 100 megabits on the ethernet connection uh... we also have connections at zero because currently we don't have anything connected to it the noise floor how much in, uh, extra noise there is or interference RFI around uh, transmit carrier quality uh, of the connection. That's the quality of the, the actual connection that you've got. And then these are going to be some other graphs here, some other gauges that show how good the connection is. So next we're going to set up the secondary station that connects to this, which is going to be the station mode. And I'll show you how to do that in just a